Quite a few Wi-Fi 7 access points have already entered the market, and after testing a few of them, it's clear that it's way too early to make the switch the newer standard. So, if you want to upgrade your wireless hardware, the Wi-Fi 6 access points remain the best option from the cost performance perspective. But why not Wi-Fi 6E? Listen, the extra 6GHz radio band will be an excellent addition in the future, but I can't really say that compatible clients are currently widespread. Sure, there's a VR headset here, some phone there, but unfortunately the Wi-Fi 6E is most likely going to be a sort of lost standard. At the moment there are no Wi-Fi 6 access points tests on this channel, but I did review quite a few of them over the years in written format, and I also retested what I consider to be the best among them specifically for this video. These new tests focus on the multi-client performance with the latest firmware update. Also, I know that there may be better devices out there, but I will limit myself to what I personally tested. This is not some soulless listicle. That being said, I chose the TP-Link EAP670, the Ingenious ACW230S, the Zyxel Wax 650S and the Ubiquiti U6 Pro. Let's first talk about the design of the access points and the heat management. The best looking access point from the bunch is most likely the Ubiquiti U6 Pro, due to its compact circular case with a ring LED at the top, but the ACW230S is definitely a close second, also sporting a fairly narrow case. The Zyxel Wax 650S and the TP-Link AAP670 are very large access points and they will hardly blend in with the ceiling, and as for the mounting options, all can be mounted on the ceiling using the dedicated brackets, but only the TP-Link access point and the U6 Pro will allow the cable to sit comfortably while the devices are mounted on the wall. In terms of port selection, the most bold device is the Zyxel Wax 650S, which has two ports, one 5 gigabit and the other simple gigabit, while all other three devices have one 2.5 gigabit port only. But there is an important aspect that needs to be discussed, and is the power consumption. To be able to reach its full potential, the Zyxel Wax 650S needs a PoE++ network switch and it will draw 31 watts, which is above the 90.5 watts of the Ingenious ACW230S, the 30 watts requirement of the Ubiquiti U6 Pro, and the 20 watts needed to power up the TP-Link AAP670. I also need to mention that the U6 Pro can only be powered up using PoE, so you will need an extra switch or PoE adapter, while the other three devices can be connected to a power outlet. Now let's talk about the heat management. All four access points rely on passive cooling. Yes, even the U6 Pro. And as expected, the two larger devices, the EAP670 and the Waxis 50S, perform better than the other two access points. The U6 Pro was a bit warmer than the aforementioned two devices, while the Ingenious ECW230S managed to get hot to the touch. So yes, the slim case does come at a cost. Now let's see which is the better equipped access point. I opened up all of these access points, and yes, the Ubiquiti U6 Pro was the most difficult to open, but what's important right now is which one has the best components. The Zyxel Wax 650S and the Ingenious ACW230S share the same processor, and the same can also be said about the other two access points, which also share the same processor, but the former is a bit better than the latter. As for RAM and MIMO configuration, the ACW230S seems to be the best equipped one, which makes sense considering the extra security features that it offers, and it's immediately followed up by the Zyxel Wax 650S. But let's move forward to the test and see which one offers the best throughput. After Running a few single client tests using a Wi-Fi 6 client device equipped with an Intel AX200 adapter, we can see that the Zyxel Wax 650S offers the best throughput when using the 160MHz channel bandwidth, getting above the gigabit limit. The second place is taken by the TP-Link AAP670, and I have also added more access points to the list to get an idea about how other devices perform. You will see that the ACW230S is missing from this graphic, and it's because it does not support the 160 channel bandwidth bandwidth. Is it a deal breaker? Not really unless you have a very clean interference free environment, but it is less equipped than some other access points from this list. Switching to the 80 MHz channel bandwidth, we see that the TP-Link AAP670 gets to the top and it's followed by the WAX 650S. The Ingenious ACW230S and the U6 Pro are a bit less impressive here. All this was upstream, but some of you may also need to upload stuff to the internet, so how is the downstream performance? Using the 160MHz channel width, the Zyxel Wax 650S takes the lead and surprisingly it's only closely followed by the Wax 630S. The TP-Link AP670 may have been impressive upstream, but downstream it did lose quite a bit of momentum. 
Using the 80 MHz channel bandwidth, we see that the WAX 650S is still the best performance, significantly outclassing pretty much all other Wi-Fi 6 access points that I tested so far. Let's now talk about range. I could simply check out which access point had the best throughput at 70 feet in my house, but since each home layout is different and interference is also unique to each location, it's far wiser to take into account the signal attenuation. This way you can also reproduce these results in your own home. It also helps us see which access point offers the best throughput when the attenuation is at or more than minus 80 dB. When using the 160 MHz channel bandwidth, we see that the winner is the TP-Link AAP670 followed by the Zyxel Wax 650S. When using the 80 MHz width, the EAP670 falls to the last place, the Zyxel Wax 650 being the best out of the bunch. I know that you may ask why didn't I add the U6 long range. Surely it must have a better range than the U6 Pro, right? I tested these two devices in Europe, which means that the gain was much more limited than in the US. I won't focus as much on the 2.4GHz band performance, but it's still very important for smart and general IoT devices. Unsurprisingly, the Ingenious ECW230S does take the lead, offering a very good throughput up to the 45 feet point. Now let's see the range, because it's far more important on the 2.4GHz radio band. And talk about an unexpected turn of events. Pretty much all the access points from the bottom of the previous graphic offer a better throughput than the top 4 when the signal attenuation gets close to minus 80 dB. This means that these access points will continue to offer a better connection a lot further. Now let's see which access point has the best latency. If you're not familiar with how I conduct the multi-client tests, I show them far more in depth in pretty much every other access point or auto review, so do check them out as well. In essence, I get 5 client devices and run various types of traffic. The open source tools from under NetHydra then show the latency detected at each client level. So let's see how well the access points handled simultaneous NTP streaming on 5 client devices. I could not add all the values that I got since it would have been a mess of a graphic, so I only included the median latency. Do let me know if you want to see the full latency graphics for any of these access points since I have them prepared in their folder. Anyway, we can see that the TP-Link AAP670 is the clear winner, staying very close to 50 milliseconds on the Wi-Fi 6 and 6E clients, with a slight rise near 80 milliseconds with the two Wi-Fi 5 clients. A close second is the Ingenious ECW230S, which manages to stay near 70 milliseconds with three clients, but does go above 100 milliseconds for the other two. Not really ideal, since the user will experience buffering, and we're not even yet in the 4K realm. The other two access points did not perform very well, so I suppose it's wise to limit the amount of client devices that need to stream 1080p footage at the same time to lower than 5. Moving forward, I simulated 4K streaming on the 5 client devices, and again, the TP-Link AP670 doesn't disappoint, although one client did rise way above reasonable latency levels. The worst offender is the Ubiquiti U6 Pro, which offers an unusable performance on all 5 client devices, while the other two access points struggle to stay within the 100 milliseconds limit. Again, be aware that this is the mean latency and doesn't paint the full picture. Now let's see how well these 4 access points handle simultaneous downloading traffic. It's worth mentioning that unlike the previous two types of traffic, there is no throughput cap here, so each client can draw out however much it can. And you can see the total throughput for each device written near the labels. None of these values are anything I would call decent or passable, but at least we can see which access point better handles the simultaneous downloading of a 10 megabytes file on 5 clients. The TP-Link AP670 is again the winner but it also let loose on one client device, reaching a latency close to 3.5 seconds on the Purzima board A32. Now let's move forward and see how the access points handle a mix of traffic. We're going to start with one downloading client, two 4K streaming devices and two intense browsing clients. And these are the results. Unfortunately, we can take the Ubiquiti U6 Pro away, since it doesn't offer a good performance at all here. The intense browsing was handled well by all client devices, yes, including the U6 Pro that I discarded, and the 4K streaming performance leaves a lot to desire. It should have been at maximum 50 milliseconds. I would say that overall it's a tie between the Zyxel Wax 650S and the TP-Link AP670. Be aware that I also included the total throughput. Moving forward, I limited the number of clients to 3 and ran intense browsing voice over IP traffic and I downloaded 1 megabyte files continuously. And things got overall better. The voice over IP latency is very similar across all 4 access points and the intense browsing remained within the reasonable limits as 
well. As for the downloading latency, we see that the TP-Link AP670 handled it the best, although I suppose other access points also did decently well. Now let's check which access point has the best software. Let's first see if we get the option to configure and monitor these access points in standalone mode, since most have already migrated towards cloud management. The Zaxel Wax 650S doesn't really have a very comprehensive local management platform, while the Ingenious ACW230S offers very little configuration options, so you have to rely on the manufacturer's servers pretty much all the time. The TP-Link AP670 and the Ubiquiti U6 Pro both offer a similar approach. You can run the Omeda SDN and the Unify instance locally or relying on the manufacturer's servers. Also, both of these access points have some form of standalone platform, in terms of layout and options, the Unify feels mature and it's actually the inspiration for the Omeda software since TP-Link kind of wants to welcome the Unify users that got jaded with the present and past behaviors from Ubiquiti. But the problem remains the variety of supported devices because Ubiquiti offers so many options while TP-Link is still catching up. As for Zyxel, it's essentially an enterprise level access point and you do get access to a lot of settings and features. The interface can feel a bit hard to navigate at times and some advanced features are locked by subscription. The Ingenious ECW 230S cloud management platform is also feature rich and yes, some of the advanced settings are also locked behind the subscription, especially the high-end security options. And we do know that the ACW 230S does have a dedicated radio for checking out for any targeted RF jamming, so a few of these security features are pretty much mandatory, otherwise the ACW 230 would suffice. Now let's see which access point is the best in terms of security. As expected, I do think that the Ingenious ACW230S takes the top spot. It offers the aforementioned RF jamming detection and there's also the evil twin attack and the malicious attack detection. It's actually really good at identifying rogue access points and those that rely on the impersonation technique. Additionally, there is also a means to help the sysadmins to quickly understand and correct any issue with a remote network, which is a huge plus that I have not seen on other devices. Not at this level anyway. The Zyxel Wax 650S also has the collaborative detection and response, which has the role of detecting and quarantining infected devices. It's a system that relies on anti-malware, URL threat filter and an IDP. So that's about all for now. We do get the Ubiquiti U6 Pro as the best design access point and its Unify being really good for all kinds of users, advanced and novices alike. The Ingenious ACW230S has the most advanced security features and it also has a very slim case. The Zyxel Wax 650S mostly dominates the single client tests, while the TP-Link AP670 being a very close rival. As for the multi-client test, the AP670 was a clear winner. If you like this type of content, let me know and I will update it in the future and may release one covering the Wi-Fi 7 access points as well. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you for watching and see you next time.